Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. Today, we're diving into a fundamental concept in mathematics, sets. Whether you're in high school or college, understanding sets is super important because it lays the groundwork for more complex topics. So, what exactly is a set? Simply put, a set is just a collection of well-defined objects or elements. And don't worry, we'll break this down with some easy-to-understand examples. A set is all about grouping things together in a way that makes sense. Imagine you have a collection of your favorite books or a list of your top songs. Each of these collections is a set. We usually represent a set with a capital letter, like A or B, and list the elements inside curly braces, like this. Set A equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Easy, right? These numbers are the elements of the set A. Now, let's talk about how we can represent sets. There are three main ways to do this. 1. Statement form. This is where you describe the elements in words. For example, the set of even numbers less than 10. 2. Roster or listing form. Here, you list out all the elements, like set B equals the set containing 2, 4, 6, and 8. 3. Set builder form. This one's a bit more technical. You describe the properties that the elements must satisfy, like set B equals the set of all X such that X is an even number less than 10. Don't worry, we'll practice this more later. Alright, so let's say you have a set A which is the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Each number here is an element of the set, and we can say things like, 1 is an element of A, which means 1 is part of the set A, but how many elements are there in total? That's called the cardinality of the set, and for this example, the cardinality of A, or N of A, is 5. Sets can come in all shapes and sizes, and they have cool names too. 1. Empty set. This set has no elements at all. It's like an empty box. 2. Singleton set. A set with exactly one element, like set A equals the set containing the number 3. 3. Finite set. A set with a specific number of elements, like set A equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 4. Infinite set. A set that goes on forever, like the set of all natural numbers. And there are even more types, but we'll focus on these for now. Here's where things get interesting. Sets can be equivalent or equal. If two sets have the same number of elements, they're called equivalent sets, like set A equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, and 4, and set B equals the set containing red, blue, green, and black. They have the same number of elements, so A is equivalent to B, but if they have exactly the same elements, they're equal sets, like set A equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, and 4, and set B equals the set containing 4, 3, 2, and 1. Here, A is equal to B, no matter the order. Let's dig a bit deeper. A set A is a subset of set B if every element in A is also in B. Think of it like this. If you have a set of fruits, and another set with just apples, the apple set is a subset of the fruit set. But if set A is a subset of B and not equal to B, then A is a proper subset of B. Conversely, if B includes all elements of A and possibly more, B is the superset of A simple enough, right? A universal set is the big box that contains all the sets you're dealing with. It's like the entire menu at a restaurant, and the sets are just your orders. Venn diagrams help us visualize how these sets relate to each other. So if you've got a universal set U and subsets A and B, we can use circles within a rectangle to show what's happening. These diagrams are super handy for visual learners. Now, let's get into some fun stuff. Operations on sets. 1. Union. A union B. This combines all elements from both sets. If set A equals the set containing 1, 2, and 3, and set B equals the set containing 4, 5, and 6, then the union of A and B equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 2. Intersection. A intersection B. This is where we find common elements between sets. 2. If set A equals the set containing 1, 2, 3, and 4, 
and set B equals the set containing 4, 5, and 6. The intersection of A and B equals the set containing the number 4. 3. Difference. A, B. This operation shows what's left in set A when you remove the elements of set B if set A equals the set containing 3, 4, and 5, and set B equals the set containing 5, 6, and 7. Then the difference of A and B equals the set containing 3 and 4. 4. Complement. A. The complement of a set A includes everything in the universal set U that isn't in A so. If U equals the set containing the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and A equals the set containing 2, 4, and 6, then the complement of A equals the set containing the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8. There are a few neat properties about complements you should know. 1. The union of A and the complement of A equals the universal set. 2. The intersection of A and the complement of A equals the empty set. 3. The law of double complement. If you take the complement of a complement, you get the original set back. So, the complement of the complement of A equals A understanding these properties will make set operations much easier. Finally, let's talk about the Cartesian product of sets. If you have two sets, A and B, the Cartesian product is all the possible ordered pairs you can make by combining an element from A with an element from B so if set A equals the set containing 1, 2, and 3, and set B equals the set containing bat and ball, then the Cartesian product of A and B equals the set containing the pairs, 1, bat, 1, ball, 2, bat, 2, ball, 3, bat, and 3, ball. This concept is super useful in areas like coordinate geometry. Thank you for watching this video on Math and Phil Tech TV. We hope you found it informative and engaging. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update and share this video with your friends and fellow learners. Your support helps us continue to create great content. See you in the next video.